Hi, welcome to this episode of Lightboard Lessons, and today we're going to talk about Kubernetes and what is Kubernetes and some of the architecture of it and whatnot. Well, I, I did not know this, so this is not my fantastic lingual ability, but Kubernetes is Greek for pilot, and, and so it's apt for uh, the, the application set. And so we covered before what containers are, and what Kubernetes does um, is it allows you to have an automa automated way to schedule and distribute application containers across the cluster. So what it provides you is uh, scalability, high availability, monitoring of all of your containers. And you know, if you, if you have an application and you've got a few containers and that's all you have to manage, no big deal, you, you deploy your containers and you're good. But as that grows, the ability to manage that manually uh, it, it gets out of control. And so that's where solutions like uh, Kubernetes uh, come into play. And so let's just kind of cover the overall uh, architecture of Kubernetes and, and, then, um, and then we'll wrap up. So uh, first of all, you have the, the master and as part of the master you have uh, you know, a lot of our super NetOps talks, DevOps, you've got this, this source of truth, right? And, and so the, uh, the source of truth uh, for um, uh, a Kubernetes uh, master is uh, this uh, ETCD. And, and so that's uh, attached uh, to the master of, of this, this cluster that, that we're working on. And also we have an API server We have a scheduler and a controller. And of course, you have the API itself. I don't know why I boxed it like that. That was weird. And so you have, uh, you know, Joe user out here, and he may come directly through uh, the programmatic API. Um, he might first hit a CLI or a GUI um, using the API and whatnot. But you know, all those APIs come in and are managed by this API server. And then from the master you have, and we'll kind of climb the, the ladder here. Let me start with a box so I don't get out of my space. But this box, would be a node. And a node is gonna be your physical or virtual machine. This is where all your, your compute would be. And so within nodes, you have the basic building block of Kubernetes, uh, which is a pod. And a pod can be one or more containers. Um, see mostly Kubernetes work with Docker, but you know it works with other containers as well. But you have in a pod one or more containers. And then a pod is, is spun up and destroyed. There's no resurrecting pods. They will spin up a new pod when the old pod is destroyed. So it's a, a one, one time thing for, for each pod. Uh, but you can have multiple pods on a node. So if you think about this as like a, an ESXi server host, virtual machine host, then you have multiple um, virtual machines within it. Well, a node is a single compute instance that has multiple pods, each of which could have multiple uh, containers within it. So, um, the, uh, so let's say on this node, let's, we have that pod, we have a bigger pod, and then a couple smaller pods. And the uh, master uh, is taking care of scheduling where, and uh, scheduling controlling where all of this stuff lives. And, and so if we had that node, let's just kind of come across here and, and, uh, and we're having a second node. So we have node one and node two. These are um, separate compute instances and so we have another pod and another pod. All right, 
So within Kubernetes, you can start up a pod um, and, and kill a pod, but if you, if you kill a pod, there's no process that's gonna come behind you and spin up another one. And that's where the next kind of building block comes into, and that's where you would have a uh, kind of a replication set. So this is policy that is going to say, for this replication set on this, um, I want to spin up these sets of, of pods. And, uh, you know, out here to the side, I should draw all these containers. You know, you have some kind of a, an image store or a repository or whatever. But all your images, so it's going to come out and find all your images. And so when you uh, configure a replication set, say, I want three instances of, of these pods running at all times. And, and so this is where, you know, desired state comes in. And so if it's going to track to make sure those things are running, so you can uh, query via the command line, or API, whatever, and you can see if you're at your desired state on whether or not all of your, um, inst your pods are running that, that you expect to be running um, in that replication set. And then you can kind of wrap that even a little bigger with a deployment, and deployments can track uh, versioning. So if you want to upgrade your deployment from V1 to V2, maybe you've changed a little bit somewhere in your application, uh, you can do V1 to V2, then that will uh, kill your existing pods, spin up the new ones, and it will give you that transitional data uh, flowing through that instance. And so all of this here is a uh, control plane. So we can kind of control plane and control plane and say we want pods equal three for this particular replication set. So say that happens to be these three pods. Okay, and another replication set is controlling some level of these other pods. All right, now on each of these nodes, we have this kublet. And this is kind of the, the, the daemon that's kind of running on a node to talk to master and make sure that the pods are running and it communicates monitoring and, and the scheduling and all that. So each node has this kubelet process running and it also has what they call the kube proxy. And so this is kind of where your, um, uh, your access uh, to these pods is, is going to occur. So you can have out here a service And so the service is also attached to a set of pods. And, and so you're just like, well, what's the difference between a replica set and a service if they're both attached to pods? And the difference here is control plane versus data plane. So say the same set of pods I have attached uh, to the service. This is data plane. And this is where our users are going to come in. So this is, you know, IP port um, access into this set. So locally here on a node, locally on this node, you also have over here the same. You have a kublet, and you have the um, the proxy. Okay, and so they manage the communication between the pods. So that's that you talk about that automated um, configuration that you don't have to build headaches to worry about how they communicate that that takes care of that networking communication for you. So once you've established that the access into that is this IP and port, that's where you can give access to direct users. Or if you wanted to have some kind of advanced services out at this level, say you wanted some kind of security services or additional um, uh, traffic 
management services. Uh, so like SSL offload or, or you know, name, name your service uh, in the application delivery portfolio. Um, you can do any kind of those services out here in front. And so you could have multiple collections of pods uh, to, to manage that however you want to architect your applications. Um, so, uh, you know, again, we have data plane from uh, API server coming here to deployment replication set into uh, this via, um, I should have drawn that, via the kubelet. And, and then we have the data plane coming through cube, uh, cube proxy into uh, getting access to uh, the pods. So in a nutshell, that's, that's what Kubernetes is. Uh, there are tons of tutorials out on YouTube, uh, if you like video uh, like this, there are tons of uh, write-ups. Uh, Kubernetes documentation uh, on the site is also quite good. And so I hope this has uh, introduced you into the Kubernetes um, ecosystem. And uh, thank you for joining us. And if you like this video, subscribe, and we'll see you out there in the community.